Recognizing the type of data you have is a critical first step in data analysis. You must correctly identify the data in order to execute the proper analysis. There are many frameworks for classifying data. The oldest and most recognized in the social sciences was created by Stevens. In his framework, there are four types of data, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Nominal data are the most basic type. Values represent discrete units, and the numerals are simply labels. Examples include uh, hair color, gender, race, or religion. We can use those labels directly and just write down the hair color as our data points, or we can use numbers or letters as symbols to represent those values. Next is ordinal data. Here, numerals designate discrete units with a natural rank order. Examples include grade level, a Likert scale, which is a type of question where someone is asked to reply as strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree. Another example is if you have a race, uh, the finishing position of the runners in a race would be an example of ordinal data. The next type of data is interval data. These data have ordered units with intermediate values, and the distance between the units is the same. However, interval data have an arbitrary zero. Examples include the Celsius or Fahrenheit scale, and also normalized scores, which are a type of score that are commonly encountered in educational testing. Finally, we have ratio scales. Here we have ordered units with intermediate values, and the distance between units is the same, just as it was with interval data. However, with the ratio scale, we have an absolute zero. Examples include the Kelvin scale and weight. Let's look at the Ames housing data and try to identify a few types of data. The first variable is lot area. It is measured in square feet, therefore it is a ratio scale. The second variable is building type. You can see the values listed here are one fam and town HSE. These are simply nominal codes that are used to indicate the different types of buildings. The third variable is overall quality, and it's an ordinal variable because the quality is rated on a scale from 1 to 10, where 1 equals poor and 10 equals excellent. Next, we have the year the house was built, and this is also an ordinal variable. Finally, we have the square footage of the dwelling. And square footage is also measured in square feet, therefore it too is a ratio scale, just like it was with lot area. Stevens typology is ordered such that nominal data is at the bottom and ratio data is at the top. Operations permitted for one data type are not permitted for lower types. At the nominal level, we can perform one-to-one -one mappings. For example, changing the code for a single-family home does not change the meaning of the variable because we know that the code indicates a single-family home. Descriptive statistics for nominal variables include counts, percentages, the mode, and contingency tables. For ordinal data, any order-preserving transformation is acceptable. When summarizing ordinal data, permitted statistics include the median and percentiles, in addition to those that we listed for nominal variables. For interval data, linear transformations are permissible. Summary statistics for interval data include the mean, standard deviation, and correlations we could also use the median and percentiles. Finally, ratio data has an absolute zero, and to transform ratio data from one scale to another, we need only multiply the values by a constant. All of the statistics we use for ordinal and interval data may be used with ratio data. We could also use the coefficient of variation, which is the ratio of the standard deviation divided by the mean. Stevens framework is very useful, but people have created other typologies. The discrete versus continuous distinction is easy to apply, and it corresponds with the distinction between discrete and continuous probability distributions. Discrete variables have a countable number of integer values. There are no values with decimals. Examples include nominal and ordinal variables and frequency counts. Continuous variables, on the other hand, take on an infinite number of values. For example, there's an infinite number of values between 1 and 2 when we have continuous variables. 
interval and ratio variables are example of continuous variables. Let's look back at the Ames housing data and determine whether or not each variable is continuous or discrete. Lot area is a continuous variable. Building type is a discrete variable. Overall quality is also a discrete variable. The year the dwelling was built is discrete. And finally, the square footage is a continuous variable. Another type of distinction between types of data is the qualitative versus quantitative distinction. Qualitative data have values that differ in quality but not quantity. These are also called nominal variables. Quantitative variables, on the other hand, differ in quality and quantity. Ordinal, interval, and ratio variables are all quantitative variables. Correctly identifying the type of data is an important first step in data analysis. I recommend that you first determine whether the data are discrete or continuous, and then determine whether or not the data are nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. Once you know the type of data, you can choose the correct method of analysis.